गुड मॉर्निंग सर नाश्ते के बाद थोड़ा सुस्ती आ जाती है <laughs> तो इट इज नेसेसरी कि थोड़ा अवेकिंग हो जाए दैट्स एसेंशियल सो इट्स गुड टू सी यू ऑल आफ्टर ए लॉन्ग टू इयर्स ऑफ कोविड 19 एंड वी वर नॉट एबल टू मीट फिजिकली इंटरेक्टिंग फिजिकली एंड अदर वी वर मीटिंग just online and uh, it became our habit and uh, also said not of money no doubt about it but there is no substitute to interactive meetings like this and i am very happy that uh, dr dk singh and dr avasti invited a lot of uh, senior people over here and uh, they have organized this joint meet and basically it's a annual cooperators conference to review the impact of poly 4 which has been tested at different locations so good to see you all and i i hope that this conference would be very useful to you all as well as the personal interaction would be extremely beneficial honorable mr Gareth Van Owen, Deputy High Commissioner, UK High Commissioner, we welcome you, sir. And uh, it's uh, our pleasure to see you here, particularly Hyderabad. You know, it's a city known for IT industry, known for lot of Indian Council of Agricultural Research, Government of India, agricultural institutions. It's a hub. of academic institutions and therefore this is a unique city where you will like to have lot of things to see and uh, a beautiful outside if you go nearby hyderabad is beautiful places are located over here including film city so which uh, perhaps you might have seen it's uh, people come to see film city over here Ramara Film City. It's a vast experience uh, over there. Mr. Ross uh, Michael, Global Head uh, Agronomy, AACM, and uh, we are happy to see you here. Then, Mr. Roy Moore, Regional Head, APAN, and India APAN, and uh, you have been here, and you will be. deliberating with the different scientific persons different uh, uh, people over here that will be good to learn more about the agriculture about the scenario in the country and overall uh, you can say agriculture sector particularly in india we have a very close friend of mine dr ak singh ji former vice chancellor bau and in fact a uh, lot of uh, you know developments have taken place during his time he is the man of uh, former education i would talk i would not talk uh, extension education but former education programs and leading as a you know director for the specific region and we have with us dr gopinath who is uh, the person organizing this and the very eminent personality like dr k n tiwari ji whom i met after a long time dr r n yadav ji dr d m hegde ji my close friends then dr ganeshan dr ravi gopal i think uh, he is here Dr. K. S. Mansan and all the staff, colleagues of Krida. In fact, uh, I had an opportunity to visit this institute long back. We used to come to Nar to directorate of Palm Tree Research, now Indian Institute of Palm Tree Research, and uh, because it used to be located uh, in the interior part, so it was difficult to come to this place. and many times we used to visit rajendragar and go back so 
Uh, it's good that uh, after almost uh, uh, maybe two decades, we are visiting this Krida Center, but nonetheless, this very important center, which has played a very significant role in improving the cultivation in dryland areas of the country, uh, which forms a major part. And a lot of uh, good programs and activities have been undertaken by the center. Press and media, ladies and gentlemen, present over here. Let me first say, and I am happy that Anglo American, which is a leading global mining company, and uh, I was just li listening, including diamonds, so they are so you know valuable uh, that uh, mining diamonds. So it's a leading company, and uh, they their products are the essential ingredients in almost every aspects of modern life. One thing I would like to mention about this company which uh, I feel very good that out of the total employee, the women's share is 23%. So that's the one good thing that they are sharing 23% women, uh, you know, workers. And uh, that's a, you know, a happy situation to maintain a sort of gender balance. And the olive ore which is there, this is extract of polyhalide used for the manufacture of a multi-nutrient low chloride olive ore which we call, it's a fertility polyphore. And uh, since uh, this requires no chemical processing and uh, it uh, has therefore low carbon dioxide emissions, therefore the carbon footprints are extremely low or almost negligible. So, this product, uh, you know, when I was a vice chancellor of the first, uh, I would say, institution of national importance in agriculture, Rani Lakshivai Central Agriculture University, newly established in 2014, and Dr. Abasti, who appears to be our student at Pantanagar, contacted us to test this polypho. So we gladly agreed that let us see how it performs. My colleague Dr. Yogeshwar Singh is here who will present the outcome of the trials which have been laid out at our research farm. But what I could gather that uh, this polyphore which we have tested on maize, corn, chickpea and brassica, three crops basically we tried and the effect was eminent. You can visibly see where the polyphore was used almost in a 100% replacement of potassium by polyphore. The differences were visible. So this uh, sort of uh, visibility in other crops also and as you know pulses and oil seeds require sulfur and without sulfur you can't think of their production and productivity. Sulfur is an essential component. And in fact, uh, now you all know the soil scientists are also here, agronomists are also here. That uh, after M, P, and K, sulfur is becoming now fourth important nutrient element. And this product has got uh, one good uh, uh, point that it has got 18.5% sulfur. So it's used particularly not only as a potassium but as a sulfur as a source of magnesium, as a source of calcium would definitely benefit crops in many ways. So I hope that this product uh, in future could be uh, very well, uh, you know, valuable for the farming community and uh, this will increase not only uh, resilience to soil, to compaction, erosion, and also the runoff, but also improve the quality, not only quantity, but quality, and also the soil structure, which is again very important. So, this product, uh, in two days' time, you will know more about this product. During the discussions, you will have a lot of interactions, and uh, the outcome would be certainly useful for the farming community, as Dr. A.K. Singh was mentioning that if something is good, 
that's so great for the farming community at the RDF. Friends, we have just uh, celebrated uh, World Food Day yesterday, 15th October 1945, was the day when we used to celebrate World Food Day. And uh, the importance is just to remind us the importance of our food program because you know that lot of food is wasted. Wastage of food is, uh, you know, very high. And uh, almost one third, uh, if I just talk about food is wasted. So if we utilize it properly, post harvest technology, properly, food system, if we take totality, then certainly we can feed a lot of population. And I would like to tell my friends over here sitting on the dais that India is a country which could feed 800 million people free without any charge, free of cost, and that's a great service to the nation. And therefore, nobody could, uh, you know, sleep hungry in spite of the COVID problem. And there were, you know, it's a visible impact. And uh, in spite of COVID-19, there was positive growth in agriculture sector. And this is the agriculture sector due to which the economy of the country could sustain. So, thanks to all the scientists, policy planners, and the farming community who could make agriculture sustainable even during the corona period. And we could achieve year by year the targets, not only targets, exceeding the targets by producing 360 plus, more than that, 360 million tons of food grain and 335 million tons of particle crops, never in the history. So when we talk of, uh, you know, nutritional history, food security, India has made a tremendous progress. Not only India has given the, you know, its population enough food in the neighboring countries, the country exported and provided food and medicine to nearby countries and many other countries. So the, the, the growth which the country has made in recent years is really remarkable and India is now one of the leading economies in the world. Now, FAO, you know, leads to global efforts to conquer hunger, promote nutrition and food security and uh, therefore its targets to eliminate hunger, food insecurity and malnutrition. Of course, we have achieved uh, food security. We talk enough cereal food systems is there. But if we talk the total food system, particularly in the context of India, on an average, uh, we consume 822 million tons of total material, whether it is, you know, food material I am talking, I am not talking food, grain, total food material. But by 2030, we require 1056 million tons. So, for the growing population, we require more and more, not only food and food products, but also we require the nutrients, nutritional rich products. So the nutritional security need to be achieved. That is a big task before us. So the Indian, in the context of India, the target is to make agriculture more sustainable, reduce rural poverty, which to a larger extent we have been able to do. Ensure inclusive and efficient agriculture and food system and protect livelihood from disease and, uh, you know, particularly disasters, many disasters because of the climate change impact. You can see not only climate change impact, but because of the man intervention, human intervention, encroachment at different places, the land being lifted. So, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, human interventions has led to climate change and ultimately affected the, uh, you know, disaster in the many parts of the world. The SDG agenda, if we call 2030, is also synchronous and the three main points uh, which we need to remember is to eliminate poverty, zero hunger program, 
and total health and bank. And India is giving more trust now on all the three components, not only malnutrition, not only reducing the poverty, and also total health by having lot of schemes, health uh, uh, pro schemes due to which uh, the health standards have gone up in the country. So the theme of 2022 has been leave no one behind. We need uh, everyone togetherness and uh, this under nutrition and you know over nutrition both are a problem because when we talk malnourishment it is under and over nutrition both uh, uh, are there and uh, 194.4 million people in the country are still undernourished. So globally this undernutrition, this uh, malnutrition particularly in Asian and African countries this is a big issue and uh, we need to have a you can say reduce the mortality rate particularly infant mortality rate the child below 5 years of age the mortality rate of course it has reduced but it is still high the anemic uh, women anemic children and stunted growth about 34.5 percent so all these parameters are there which impact our you know nutrition and which are directly related to stunted and wasted growth and also anemic situations and a uh, lot of uh, deaths uh, due to iron deficiency. So the micronutrient deficiency in fact uh, has to play a significant role. People forget about micronutrients. Mostly the urea, nitrogen, in most of the parts if we go particularly in North India, Northwestern part, you will feel that lot of use of urea. Why to use urea in so much quantity? We have to have a balance, we have to have an integrated approach, integrated nutrient management. We need to talk precision agriculture. And now we have to have a location specific data generated and now we have lot of uh, you know science development has taken place, lot of uh, GIS modeling and everything. So in recent days with the drones and whatnot, you can make lot of impact. And ultimately, we have to see how we can improve the food system, which is complex. And we have to or reorient our global production system from caloric centric, caloric, caloric cereal centric. In fact, uh, mostly we, if we have a bread, if we have rice and beef, which in northern belt rice wheat system has been dominating, and we need to talk about diversification. So we need to reorient ourselves from caloric centric cereals to neglect of proteins, vitamins and minerals and fats. Vitamins and minerals particularly in Corona period, there were a lot of goals to improve the immunity and vitamins and minerals have played a very significant role. A lot of you know pharma sector boom has come because of this you know sale of these uh, vitamins and uh, uh, vitamins and minerals. So the new matrix has to be in place, particularly during the international year of millets. Now coming up, lot of emphasis is on the millets, which are we call neutral millets and uh, the the chemicals uh, like uh, polypore which we are which we have said just in age, it is uh, proving useful. So in other millets also it needs to be tried. Roughly, if we talk about more than 2 billion people, uh, they lack vital micronutrients and ultimately it affects the health and life expectancy. So the micronutrient level, certainly like magnesium which we could see from this polyphore and uh, you know magnesium plays a very important role you know in the building of the energy, helps in the cardiovascular system also in the diabetics, its role in the politics and many other, you know, when we talk about the total energy role of magnesium is eminent. So ultimately, we need to shift to a system where we can get a nutritional rich food. Not only calorie rich food, but a nutritional rich food, total rich food. And that is why many fortified varieties are not coming up, but we have to see the soils. We have been extracting a lot of natural resources. We have been producing more and more. The land is limited and the natural resources have been 
slowly and slowly <laughs> depleting. So depletion of the national sources will certainly lead to deficiency of micronutrients in the soils. We need to take up such fertilizers, such products which will improve the micronutrient status and ultimately micronutrient uptake by the plant system will certainly help in the overall health system of the part of the people overall improve the immunity and we feel that the COVID-19 again COVID system should not repeat. We pray God and hopefully the, the immunization program with the country has taken more than 2.2 billion vaccines have been given. This is a unique program which the country has taken. So thanks to the government of India and everyone sitting over here who has taken proactive measures in, you know, almost uh, having a control of, uh, you know, this uh, pandemic. And now we are sitting over here and we shall be here for two days interacting together, meeting and discussing on various issues. And I hope the two day deliberation to be very useful and I'm sure that the product will make a headway in the near future. With these words, I thank you once and all for giving me the opportunity, particularly Director Frida and Dr. Rusty and all from Anglo-American team. Thank you very much.